So we have a solution here, and in this solution, we see that we have NH3, nitrogen with three things connected, is a base, and it's a weak base at that. So if you were to add a proton, it ended up being with NH4+, plus, that's the cation of this salt, this would be its conjugate acid. So we have got a solution that contains a weak base and its conjugate acid, so we have got what we call a buffer. And any time we want to calculate the pH of a buffer, we should use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. pH equals pKa plus the log of the concentration of base or the concentration of acid. Now students sometimes want to do something different if we've got a base buffer rather than an acid buffer, but we still use exactly this equation. So if we're wanting to get the pH, we need the pKa. I see here that they gave me the pKb. So how do we get the pKa from the pKb? I mean from, I'm sorry, they gave me the Kb and I'll need the Ka so I can get the pKa. So how do I get the Ka? We know that the Ka is Kw divided by Kb. Kw is 1 times 10 to the minus 14 divided by 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. And that will give me 9.55, it just keeps going on, times 10 to the minus um, 10. There's the Ka. So now we're ready to calculate the pH. pH is pKa, that would be the negative log of that 9.55 times 10 to the minus 10, plus the log. Now which one was the base? The base was the NH3, and it's 0 0.10 divided by 0 0.15. Those are the concentrations. And that'll give me a pH equal to 9.255, carrying a little bit extra sig figs along for the ride, plus a negative 0 0.176. And this will give me a pH of 9.08. Now just a little quick word about this. The pH of 9.255 is basic, and typically if you're making a buffer from a base and its conjugate acid, it's going to have a pH in the base range. That's typical. Um, this would be the pH, the 9.255, would be the pH if we had equal amounts of these two components because the log of 1 is equal to 0. Remember, the second term, term kind of fine-tunes it up or down. In this case, it's fine-tuning it down, and let's see if that makes sense. Which do we have more of, the base or the acid? We would have more of the acid, so we'd expect it to come down a little bit, and so we'd have a pH of 9.08. Let's stop there, but the next two videos I'm going to create will be adding an acid to this buffer and seeing how it changes the pH, and then adding a base to this buffer and seeing how it affects the pH. So I produced a video where we calculated the pH of this buffer that contained a weak base and its conjugate acid salt. But now we're going to go and have it do what buffers do, and that is resist change to pH when you add either an acid or a base. When I look at this HNO3, I know that HNO3 is a strong acid. And we're adding this strong acid to the buffer. The hard part about doing these problems is to write this first reaction. We have to write that acid being neutralized by the buffer. Now when I come across a strong acid, it really does not exist in solution as HNO3. It 100% ionizes and I always write H3O plus for my strong acids. And then I have to decide what portion of that buffer is going to be neutralized or is going to neutralize that acid. So we have here NH3 and we have here NH4. Which of those is a base? Bases neutralize acids. Well, the base is NH3. So this is what is going to neutralize that added acid. It is a one-way reaction because the strong acid pushes it to completion. And that will give me, when I swap the H plus from the acid to the base, that will turn the base into NH4 plus, and it'll turn the acid into H2O.
examine that and see how that is true as we switch where that H plus is located. Now, with a one-way reaction, I call it an ICF table. We go it to completion, not to an equilibrium. It's a way of doing limiting reactant problems, and I will put moles into my table. So I don't need to know moles of each one of these components. Well, I was already told the moles of the strong acid. So it's 0 0.0025 moles. In terms of the ammonia, I am going to need to take the molarity of the ammonia, which is 0 0.10 moles per liter, and multiply by how many liters of this buffer I have. Well, if it's 100 milliliters, that is 0.1 liter, and that is going to give me, for the ammonia, 0 0.0010 as the, uh-oh, that's not right, point, I got too many zeros in there. Let me erase that, sorry. All right, let's try this. We have got 0.1 times 0.1 is 0.01. That's more like it. Now we need to realize that this is not a zero under the NH4. We have some NH4 before this reaction ever has an opportunity to take place. So for the NH4, what we're going to do is we're going to take the molarity of the NH4, which is 0.15 molar, or moles per liter, and again multiply by the 0.1 liters. There's 100 milliliters of the buffer. It contains both of these two solutions in it. So I have 0.015 moles. So that's going to go here. And I don't care about the water. Now I'm going to subtract until the smallest quantity gets consumed, which is the added acid. We are neutralizing all of that acid with the same amount of the base. And I'm going to produce on this side 0 0.0025. That's going to consume all the added acid. So it has neutralized that added acid, and that's why it resists change to pH. That will drop the ammonia down a bit to 0 0.0075. It will raise the ammonium up a little bit to 0 0.0175. And that is the F line. Now, when I examine this F line, I see that I have a solution that contains a weak base and its conjugate acid in solution. This is still a buffer. And as such, we can use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. pH equals pKa plus the log. And you can do it in terms of moles, number of moles of base over number of moles of acid. Now, in the previous video, we calculated the pKa. Where'd it go? And that was equal to, ignore my dog. Nikki, no. Sorry, I had to stop my dog from barking at me. <laughs> she needed her bone. Okay, so pKa, we calculated the previous problem as 9.255 extra sig figs along for the ride. So that would be plus the log, and we have to find the base. The base is the NH3, so 0 0.0075 over the acid 0 0.0175. That is going to give me a pH um, equal to, oh, let's see, that would be 9.255 plus a negative 0 0.368. Okay, and that is 8.89. If we compare this to just the buffer, just the buffer was 9.08. So it did bring it down a little bit. It makes sense that it would bring it down because we added an acid to it. So if it's going to go any direction, it should go down, but it shouldn't go down by very much, and it didn't. It went down, um, you know, less than less than two pH, uh, 0.2 pH units. So that is how to calculate a buffer's pH after you add a strong acid to it.